In an attempt to isolate the reactor after the explosion, it was encased in a steel and concrete shelter called the sarcophagus. In the years since, there have been growing concerns about its safety. Official footage bought by the Chernobyl Children's Project at Duncan's request shows the state of the interior in the year 2000. Five years on, according to Professor Nestorenko, the situation has not improved. There is a danger of that uh, shelter collapsing because they, they built it there and the roof was pretty heavy. And uh, they say that if it happens, if the roof collapses, then all the substances there, they'll go um, into the air like dust and then will be spread with the wind. And it's going to be more serious one, not only 30 kilometers area, it'll be spread all over. And when it rains and all the water gets inside, it's very dangerous because the water could uh, be in, uh, in reaction with other elements. We need another shelter, another cover over it. And then we will have to send the robots in there and just cut everything into pieces and take it from there. And uh, not far from uh, Chernobyl area, they had the granite shafts. And if you uh, put it into there and cover it properly, that's the only solution. Dr. Yuri Lepin is an ecologist with first-hand experience of Chernobyl. He himself worked on the cleanup operations in the aftermath of the explosion. I can tell you a lot about being there, about the sarcophagus. People, when they hear about sarcophagus, they think that it's something stable, something huge and safe. But in reality, it's not. It was a fine, uh, sunny weather when he had the chance to, to have a look what was inside. It was as light inside as outside. If it collapses, then all the dust that is inside of the reactor is going to get into the air. And he thinks that building another sarcophagus is a political decision and not a technical one. Funded by a group of industrial nations to the tune of $800 million, there are now plans for a new sarcophagus, a freestanding weatherproof shelter inside which the remaining parts of the reactor can, in theory, be dismantled safely. Dr. Lepin doesn't agree. It would be much wiser to do some uh, works to stabilize the one that is there. And he would use some kind of foam to fill in all the, the space the in cracks, there, all the gaps, all the cracks, cracks and uh, inside of uh, the reactor, because he doesn't think it's a good idea to build it there. In the areas affected by Chernobyl here in Belarus, you practically there is no healthy uh, children. He thinks that everybody, every single person in Belarus was affected. As radioactive iodine was spread all over Belarus. So everybody was exposed to some uh, dose of the radiation. If you were to say one thing 20 years on from the explosion to people in Europe, what would you say? Every single country where there's nuclear uh, power station or nuclear energy, there were uh, consequences of that. So I would like to say that we have to stop everything, all the work that is uh, done uh, with uh, atomic energy. The legacy of Chernobyl will affect the people of Ukraine, Russia and Belarus for many centuries to come. No other region lives with nuclear contamination on such a scale. No other people have been affected so profoundly. Back in the 60s, Chernobyl was sold to the people of Russia as the dawn of a bright new era. My biggest fear is that we haven't learned anything from what happened 20 years ago and that we again are going to make similar mistakes into the future.
We just can't afford to forget these people and what happened there.